I'm going to be reading my last article from my Facebook note, and it's entitled, Omala wins in Peru, what next? It's from the 7th of June this year. This is my first article in English responding to the good news of the final election of the presidential candidate, Ollanta Omala. Commandante Omala is a man I have admired for some time, who is from my father's country, Peru, which I got to know when I lived there in my youth, where I knew people who I keep in contact with to this day, where I plan to return. I have not. I have been doing videos in Spanish with my response to this historic news. I will now attempt to suggest respectfully what I think Peru should do in the next. Uh, do next in the context of the anti-imperialist struggle in America. I am quite acquainted with. Also, uh, what this means for fellow leftists in the U.S. in their solidarity campaigns in Latin America, and with Peru in particular. First, Umala should take steps to counter the foreign company's influence on the Peruvian economy and the, in, uh, the dependency of Peru on this influence. Whether the European American or Chilean, these companies, especially transportation companies and sacred sites like Machu Picchu, have only benefited the rich and have continued to exploit the proud working indigenous class of Peru, that of the Inca descendants in particular, who come from an ancient civilization of the American continent, one of the most grand in history, which has always had my respect and admiration. Having lived in Spain, having seen how Latin immigrants are treated there, I must say they are treated better than in the U.S. usually, uh, but there are cases of racism and resentment between the two people, or uh, bad blood from the common history they shared. After the Spanish imperialists were kicked out in the time of Liberator Boulevard, the American and other Europeans, like the British or French, tried to come with their influence, and at least in the base in Chile, to bring about economic imperialism in the struggling Peru and Bolivia who tried to gain independence. This history must be understood in context in reference to what finally brought about the leftist candidate of military indigenous background, uh, Umala. The resentment against Chilean interests is part of the patriotic nature of the condition of the mentality of a Peruvian, as the entire Bolivian coast and parts of the Peruvian coast, which had mineral richness, were taken from the Chileans back by Europe in the War of the Pacific in the 19th century, is one that must be understood. Otherwise, it is impossible to explain the current condition that has brought the democratic and revolutionary scenario to Peru as it has to other Latin American countries, especially uh, South America in the last decade, against the empire to the north, U.S. In order for Peru to progress out of its formerly fascist dictator, Fujimori, of whose daughter almost won the presidency, who has vast control of the Peruvian mass media, whether on paper or on TV, who has the dangerous influence in Congress, who could possibly stage a coup, much like the far right controls much of the Venezuelan TV, including from exile in Miami, even after the coup attempt on Chavez in 2003. Leftist populism has ultimately brought about the candidate of Umala, his election inevitably a defeat for imperialism, which, uh, much like the toppling of U.S.-backed dictator Mubarak of Egypt this year. The new generation are leading the struggle of rebellion for the right to a proper education and health with socialistic movements worldwide in unity and solidarity as comrades of the American continent. What can the North American left do to help Peru in the struggle? We must speak the truth. It must make sure it's heard about the injustices committed by U.S.-backed fascists over the years in South America from the 1970s and how a poetic justice is coming about through truly democratic means, far more democratic than any U.S. election and has barely any turnout but where numbers are manipulated by politicos or the media as a mandate, whether the youth barely turn out for local elections in each state, as we saw last year. Peru does not have a two-party system, but a parliamentary system much like Europe. Only citizens who live in Peru are obligated by law to vote on threat of fine. Whether or not you think this is just, 20 million Peruvians expressed their will, and clearly the majority voted for, Obama, for uh, Omala, in spite of everything. This victory could turn into eventual triumph for Peru and Latin America. Unity, if Mala makes the right moves, and uh, learn from the past, learn from leaders like, like Allende. Of course, learning, but not copying the Venezuelan model of revolutionary democracy in action, which is inspiring to say the least. Brazil has reconciled with Venezuela, even to a certain extent Colombia. So too does Peru have to reach out to oil-rich Venezuela, which has turned into a socialist paradise that is helping to spread progress throughout the continent. Such a fact is undeniable if you look at the real facts of the Venezuelan case. Venezuelan, after all, is a whole man of Boulevard who helped liberate Latin America from the Spanish. To conclude, I wish the best to Amala, and I hope to be able to know him someday. I have known his struggle, his rebellion, a brave rebellion against fascism, and I wish the Peruvian people the best towards a free Latin America, free of the chains of imperialism, 
or other capitalist entities of oppression. Long live Comandante Humala, who in the memory of Comandante Che will continue the struggle for this new century. Thank you.